Guten Nacht. Guten Abend. Good evening. And welcome to Vag. Video games, albums, and getting fucked. Today, or this evening I should say, uh, we have something that I thought would be really easy to start things off with because I want to be able to make uh, these things as accessible to anyone who watches them as possible <coughs> while still being a game that people are excited about. Uh, so the first one that we have is for the Super Nintendo. It's Super Mario World. Now, you might not have a Super Nintendo. You might have one buried in the attic of your parents' basement or parents' the attic. Never mind the attic of the basement. That's silly. That's a silly thing to say, Ian. Um, but you can get them on emulators quite easily. And also, there is um, a little machine. I think it's just called the, the SNES Classic. My brother got me one for my birthday. Excellent present. Uh, unfortunate that I was also, um, I just bought a SNES uh, only a month before or afterwards, but still the thought is there and never mind, never mind. Um, so yeah, very easy to play and one of the most, po probably the most popular Mario game of all time. Maybe Mario Kart, but um, this one anyway, it's really iconic. Uh, the graphics are beautiful. It doesn't matter that it's like 1992, so... 28 years, 27 years, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's still just so beautiful to watch um, the color palette, all that sort of jazz, amazing. Then we have drinking with uh, something that also sounds amazing, it's Hanky Panky. However, when you actually read into a bit more, it's like fucking gin oh, and vermouth, like mixing those like two shites together and then stirring it up and giving you like diarrhea soup and being like, ah, oh, the, the balance is counteracting here. <coughs> I can't see myself enjoying it. I'll try and keep an open mind, but I've, I've already made it up. Uh, and then we are on to, uh, what are we listening to? We are listening to Sinead O'Connor, which uh, I, I fucking love Sinead O'Connor. Nothing compares to you, and this is the album Nothing Compares to You, is one of the best power ballads of all time. I fucking, ah, oh, it's by far my favorite power ballad. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Super Mario World, Hanky Panky, which said like, you know, it like, that sounds great. That sounds like, uh, you're gonna have like sex with someone who, uh, you know, it's like, you know, ooh, very kinky girl, the type you don't take home to mother. So then. He comes in there and I said, look, bitch, I'm Rick Jane. Smack it. <laughs> like, super freak kind of girl. Sinead O'Connor, actually. There you go. Like, look back at her in the, the 90s when she was performing. The passion, the passion, Jesus. Like a model who has cancer. Oh, she'd, she'd show you a good time. Just mad, mad bitch. You wouldn't be able to stay with her long, but she'd, she'd give you quite the, quite the ride. Anyway, first things first, we need to make this elusive hanky-panky and force it down my gullet. So, off we go! Right, the cocktail we are having is a hanky-panky, which sounds way more fun than how it looks according to Google. So. Uh, one and a half ounces of gin, bleh. one and a half ounces of sweet vermouth, bleh. well, probably, bleh. I know normal vermouth is, bleh. two dashes of a Ferdy Bianca, which I only know from um, one of the Batman films, it's the thing Alfred, Alfred drinks when he's in um, Florence. I went to Florence, there's this cafe on the banks of the Arno, every fine evening I'd sit there and order a Ferdy Bianca. Uh, a dash of orange juice and a garnish of orange peel. So I don't have the Freddy Bianca, Bianca, bank, Bankini, Mankini, whatever the fuck they are. But uh, after a quick search, it said that it's this alcoholic drink that is bitter. And because there's only two dashes needed, I don't think I'll be too fucked if I just used some uh, Agonista bitters. So. A sweet, 
sweet vermouth is like that martini, the Rosso, Rosso martini, and then any yeah, fucking shit gin. I don't know why I bought decent gin. It's all, <clears throat> it's all poisoned vodka to me. Uh, right, right. I need a glass. Use one of these fancy martini glasses, shall I? I need a shaker as well, aren't I? Shut up! I'm busy. Okay, uh, steps to make. Gather the ingredients. Yeah, right. Uh, ice. Need some ice. Oh, fuck. Big thing of ice. Ah, I'm not putting a second thing of ice in it. I'm quite confident I'm gonna hate this thing, so I'm not wasting extra ice on something that I'm probably gonna take a sip of and then drink out of principle for the sake of this video and then never have it ever ever again. So right. I mean, I don't know what ounces are, I'm not American. Uh, let's just say it's 30 mils. Same. 30 mils sweet vermouth. I'm on a seeing now, but this measuring thing is fucking stupid because isn't that the. It should have the. Um, the measuring on the inside. Because you can't tell when it's up to whatever that millage is. Shut the fuck up, Ian. First world problems. Some cunts are out there dying today. <clears throat> right, so two dashes. Is that a dash? I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm not really much of a cocktail person. It's quite stupid that I'm making these videos. That looked like fuck all, so let's do that. This isn't meant to be drank on its own, but Jesus, that's... Christ! That's like bad medicine when you're a child. <clears throat> right, it says the orange juice is optional, so I'm gonna be a big boy about this, and I'm going to... Try it without the orange juice and add orange juice afterwards. Just like I'm gonna give it a chance. The whole point of this is to is to give it a chance. You belong to church. Now, first off, a health and safety thing. This is not how you are meant to cut. You're always meant to cut away from. From your body so you should always be cutting like that and um, however i don't have the patience to 
do it the right way. There's my garnish, isn't it beautiful? Uh, I really should because I I cut my finger open at my brother's wedding whilst making a sandwich for someone else. After going to hospital, it was all right in the end. There's only a couple of stitches, but I was there. I had to bread roll like that, and I was going, and then that finger got sliced open and I still have minor nerve damage in it. It doesn't really bother me other than when I'm cutting that nail, but you'd think I'd have learned. Alright, well on the positives uh, maybe 30 mils wasn't enough but I mean the ratios are there, so um, get in there, flavor that shit. Slanch it. Meh. I don't know. It's too cold to taste it. To be perfectly honest. Like, I put salt on everything. I don't have a particularly good palate of taste anyway, Tom. I don't know who invented that shit to get excited enough to turn it into a cocktail. That is very meh. Right, let's play some fucking Mario. Listen to some Sinead O'Connor. All right, here we fucking go. Been about. Oh, three months. Three months I've been planning to do this, not the recording shit, but well, yeah, I suppose the recording shit. Well, anyway, here we are. Get a bit of Sinead O'Connor on. <clears throat> it's mad to think that she's uh, converted to Islam now. Actually, it's not mad to think that at all. Sinead O'Connor has been a, a mad bitch for, for all of her career, hasn't she? Okay, here we go. So, come on, get going. Oh, that is... That brings me back. So these controls are so old. That start is the thing to like progress. You know what I mean? Like I know it's small, but like PlayStation games, you know, you'd press the X button or whatever and you'd go forward. You actually have to press the start button in SNES games. I forgot about that. go back here and you hit something that makes a lot of boxes later on up here oh <laughs> this this brings me back I don't know if me and my brother we had a snes ah got away with that me and my brother we had a snes but um I don't think we actually had this game, but like, it was, it was the 90s, so you just, uh, 
you just go around to each other's gaps, like friends' houses, and just sit there, and it didn't matter if it was a one-player or two-player game, you would just... All right, I'm risking it. Yeah, you would just sit there and watch someone else play. I suppose it's what people do now, except they do it through through YouTube. Oh, fuck. I was too slick for my own good. I gotta, what the fuck am I meant to be talking about here? Am I meant to be just doing commentary on the game? I didn't think this through. Should I be acting more enthusiastic and excited than, than what I am? If, if I'm just sort of deadpan and bland about this, like how a normal person plays a computer game, you know, you beat the level and it's like, oh yeah, that was... That was a bit of crack. Whoa, I'm super excited to be playing this game, oh my god! I haven't played this game in so long. Oh, I can't believe I got a P. Whoa, what does a P do? Oh my god, dude, this is so amazing! Oh, whoa, I'm gonna get like so many lives, bro. I'm gonna be so bad at this game. I'm gonna be so good at this game. I'm gonna be so fucking whatever awesome blah at this fucking game. Let's have some more of this terrible cocktail, eh? Mmm, yummy. Amazing. I really am in awe how that how that thing got into got into being. Ah right, here we go. So yeah, I was right. And now it goes like I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna live risky. Uh, I think you get Yoshi in this level. I think this is the first game to introduce Yoshi. Glip glop! Oh, what was that? Sp yeah, yeah, yeah! Jesus, how deep in my brain is all this shit? Oh, and you can... You get these and then you spit fire. No, wait. Blip. I don't care. There was definitely so ah! there was definitely something to that Yoshi spits out fire. Trico. So definitely one thing that I dislike about Mario and all games in general really is like the bonuses that you get. Like I'm pretty sure those big Yoshi coins, all they do is get you a score. But it's like, why do you? Why do you care about the score? Uh, uh. Fuck. Fuck! Is 
Like there, that P thing makes this solid. And then it's like how high you get the score, but like... I could kind of understand it now, nowadays, where you have online registers for scores and stuff. But like back in the day, oh, you got a million points. Who are you gonna tell that to? Your mates in, in the playground. They're not gonna give a fuck. They might not even believe you. Come over to my house, I'll show you the score. Maybe like, oh well, I don't actually play that game. I play Donkey Kong. Or maybe they'll just be like, I, I don't give a fuck about that, I play football. I play rugby. I go outside and run around the park. Ah, uh, this is the fire, yeah, you grab the red fuckers. Yeah, eat me shit. Like, there you go, 4,000 points. So what? Ask me arse. Go on the lads! Right. So while I was setting up, I actually made um I need to start on another one. I put more of that agonista stuff into it. And I'm, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna rob some of my housemates. OJ! I'm gonna see if we can actually make this into something with, I don't know, some substance. Like vermouth, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that seems like a real old school, like 1960s sort of drink to be drinking. Like I don't know anyone who's into, into vermouth. When was the last time you were in a bar or you're on a date or anything like that? And, or you're just like, with your, with, even with your parents, even with your, like with old people. And you're like, oh, I'm going to the bar. Does, does anyone want anything? And they're like, yeah, get me a martini. Even in cocktail bars, it's always like, oh, yeah, get me, get me a porn star martini. That shit doesn't have vermouth in it. That's weird. That, that, almost, that tastes stronger. Well, not stronger on booze-wise, stronger, stronger taste-wise, in a good way. Maybe it's that I'm just getting a bit more drunk. This is not the first drink I've had today. Go on, Chanel! Oh! I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about that spiky block. Fuck your block. Fuck your ball. Fuck your spike ball. Rick, do you, uh, do you remember, do 
you remember why you fucked up Charlie's couch? Yeah, I remember why I fucked up his couch because I could buy a new one. What did that do? That's surely for some kind of... Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you can, like, jump up there. Like, right, could you... Can you jump off this? Yeah, you can. That's, that's definitely some secret or something. But I am not arsed. I did... Oh! Maybe I would squash your testicles so you can feel the pain that I feel. a beating. This game isn't very challenging at the start anyway. I might start trying to like speed run it as best I can and just get through the levels super fast so that at least it's I'm dying a couple of times. I've actually seen uh, Sinead O'Connor live before. She was playing in a, a festival called Electric Picnic back in Dublin. Uh, without saving, I don't give a fuck. Uh, what, what English festival is Electric Picnic like? Oh, I remember these fuckers! And you get the. Um... Oh, I. I know I was making fun of the lads early for this, but I actually am excited about this. The, uh, the, the feather, and then you can fly. You get uh, like uh, the Superman power. Oh yeah, fuck, fuck Yoshi. I'm not gonna need him in a minute. Fuck that, and fuck you, and bang! Yeah, how do I fly? Ah, yeah, 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 you go fast, and then, na, 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 na. yeah, still got it, baby. You could like fire into the ground with this. Ah, yeah, so that. <laughs> That, uh, that speed run idea, that, um, that didn't last long, did it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go as fast as I can during this game, it's not as challenging enough. Oh, look, a feather! Look at the shiny thing! You gotta clip my wings, bro. Right, ah, oh. fuck snakes. Right. bit of a fucked up character if you think about it. He's like... 
he's a plumber who basically runs around like a severely abusing most animals. You know, like he takes care of Yoshi and he saves a couple of people, but that's like like I don't know, like a, a soldier who has a dog. And like does his missions and you know clears the Arabian embassy and all that sort of thing, but then like goes off and has a lot of fucking ferrets that he <laughs> and stomps on with his boots in his spare time. Has a lot of turtles and just like puts them down. Puts on his camo fucking boots and squeezes the life out of them. Princess, you were in that. You're in that castle. I saved you. Yes, you're 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 a great hero, but you were. I saw the footage. You, you you slaughtered a lot of animals that were just like walking around, and you perceived them to be dangerous. But I mean, everyone knows hedgehogs are prickly. You don't need to. If you go near them and then murder them, it's not exactly their fault, is it? Hey, look at that hedgehog over there! Ah! You fucking hand! I'll show you. Threaten me. Threaten my safety. Wait, how do I, how do I get into that, I remember the Boo, how do I get into Boo's castle? Shut up your wagon. Ah, oh, fuck it, I don't care. <clears throat> so yeah, I never finished that, um, that Sinead O'Connor story, did I? So, uh, what is this, one of these levels that, oh uh, yeah, pushes in. So, we're at Electric Picnic, and um, Electric Picnic, a chilled out music festival, it's, uh, it's changed a little bit uh, since the, the first time I went, it used to be more sort of a hippie thing, with like people that would be really into various causes, like Glastonbury I guess, like a really small version of Glastonbury. So like all fucking save the whales and blah 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 all that kind of shite, and uh, it got a bit more commercial. No 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 no! Ah oh, shit! Got a bit more commercial. Um, but anyway, Sinead O'Connor's playing, and I mean, tell me I'm wrong, but Sinead O'Connor has one good song. It's a fucking excellent song, and I'm delighted it's on this album. But Sinead O'Connor has nothing compares to you. It's not even her song, Prince Road. Um, but she has that song, and as far as I know, all of her other songs can fucking eat a dick. Who gives a shit? Do that in a pub quiz. Name a name two Sinead O'Connor songs. <clears throat> but anyway, poor Sinead O'Connor. She's got, she's a she's a great woman in a lot of ways, but um. She, uh, I don't know whether she did this to like get rid of the phony fans. The fuck, this cunt keeps getting me. To either get rid of this, I'm gonna die in the same way. I'm not learning, am I? So yeah, I don't know if she did this to get rid of the phony fans or whether she did it to, um, because she just doesn't, uh, she's a bit deluded as to why people would come to her concept. But she played nothing compares to you. But she played it um, in the middle of her set. And now her set was on at like 2 o'clock. And Electric Picnic isn't huge. It's not a big music festival. Uh, so 2 o'clock in the day. I think it was a Sunday or a Saturday. Either way, you had nothing else to do at that time. You know, you weren't setting up your, uh, your tent or any shit like that. You weren't packing up your tent. <clears throat> so you had nothing better to do. So there was loads of people inside the... 
the arena on the, the main stage where Sinead was was operating. But people were just, you know, sitting around, having a couple of... I've done this a third time! Fucking hell! I need to stop being entertaining and... Well, entertaining. I need to stop talking and actually concentrate on this. This is important. Past this, we can get past this. Right, that's the that's the rule of this level now. You need to be on this like a fucking. You need to be all over that right hand side like a bad suit. Right, fucking did it. I'm the king. So, Sinead O'Connor, we're there watching Sinead O'Connor and. Uh, Everyone's chilling, no one's really paying attention. It, she's got the same, I'm giving her the same amount of attention as I am right now. And so is the rest of the, um, the crowd. And then, bang, nothing compares to you comes on and everybody is just glued to the front of the stage and singing all the lyrics because it's a fucking hit. It's, oh, it's by far, my, what the fuck? You're meant to be throwing baseballs. Um, everybody's singing along. Nothing compares. And then it stops. And it's, it's the middle of her set. So she goes on to her next song. And everyone just goes. Zoom, zoom, whoosh, like it's like a robot. Everybody just gets up. I'd say, like, you know, realistically, I, I'd say 90% of the crowd gets up, turns around, and just goes back to whatever they were doing. What's, what the fuck is this thing for? Whatever. Gets up and just, that's them done. Go back to their, go back to a bar, go back to somewhere else. Go back to the campsite. That was just it, that was just done. And I was just thinking, if that wasn't intentional, if that wasn't Sinead kind of being like, here, I'm getting rid of the chat from my last songs. I'm only going to play my new album or whatever. But if, if she wasn't doing that, I hope she was because I have no ill will to Sinead O'Connor. <laughs> if she wasn't, imagine how crushing that would be as like an obvious sort of has-been one-hit wonder. You know, she's a she's an artist. You can tell she gives a okay, how do I do this now? There's a tr oh, there's a trick to this. Ah, okay. I remember that was harder to figure out when I was a child. Oh right. Don't take them coins and there'll be something afterwards. Is that P thing? That P thing is obviously gone. Oh. Go on, Shane! It's been seven hours and sixteen This is genuinely my favorite power ballad song. I fucking love this song. Oh wait, this is a fucking...
Alright, let's try this. Aha! Fuck you, Snez. Honestly, if I listen to this song in the right mood, in the wrong mood, you might say, them, them eyes start welling up. It probably hasn't, or probably has a, a little bit to do with the fact that so like the song sounds more like she's broken up with her boyfriend or something like that. So there you go. Sounds quite like a breakup there. But um So when in the video when she starts crying after the, the lyrics all the flowers that you planted mama apparently that was um that was about her own mother and so as well as the song being absolutely just fucking powerful powerful in itself oh wait what 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 oh fuck fuck So with that own knowledge that she's shedding those real tears, that's not her acting about her her own mother's death. This, I think this is it now. I mean, it can't help but make me think, fuck, I, I don't want my mommy to die. Oh God, wouldn't it be awful if she died? I'd miss her so much. Sorry if I keep touching my nose. I uh, I made the mistake of shaving some. Or well, not shaving, of putting the scissors into my nose hairs rather than pulling the whole fucking things out. And so now I've got a little nose hair and it's driving me fucking nuts. But it's not big enough for me to yank the fucker out yet. So I'm caught in limbo. Oh wait, 100 is probably the, the big dog, the big dog points. <sighs> All right, what's this? Give me some, give me some mushrooms. Mushrooms, mushrooms. Mushrooms. Give me some, give me some fucking shrooms. Listen to the sound effect. That gunshot. Now this would be only for the people who are really, <laughs> I mean hopefully, you probably are really into old school games if you're watching this fucking, oh, this idiot do this shit. But um, that sound effect is a, uh, a game called Metal Slug. I, I loved it. You like it was a side scroller, and it was just like all these. It's kind of cartoony. Like the graphics were. 
Maybe a little bit more advanced than a, than a SNES. Maybe on a SNES. But you'd be going along and you'd like, uh... Oh! Uh, the Hammer Bros, I remember. Ah! Oh yeah. Oh, this is Mario's dream. I can like fuck up so many innocent animals. Look at these turtles are just like walking around and these fuckers. Oh yeah, yeah, get some. If Mario was in Nam, he'd definitely be like that guy in a. Uh... What's the film? Full Metal Jacket. Anyone who runs. It's a VC! And he's there with the big fucking machine gun. He's there like shooting down all these poor Vietnamese fuckers who are just like trying to tend to their rice fields. Anyone who runs is a VC! Anyone who stands still is a well disciplined VC! Yeah, Mario would be that guy. Hey! Anyone who gets crushed under my boots when I jump on the head is a Goomba. Anyone who gets crushed under my head, but only after I have had a mushroom, is a big Goomba. <laughs> All right, I need to be tactical about this. I need to suck this fucker up. Now, ah, for fuck's sake! Balls to the wall, go! All right. Died for the cause, man. Just another innocent animal that Mario doesn't give a fuck about. Did you see his expression change when his his friend just fell into a cavern after you know he just sacrificed himself in order to keep Mario safe? So it's not a not a bead. He's like a sphinx. He's like a good poker player, our Mario. There's, there's being the boss of the streets, grabbing someone, someone there to fuck with you, and you grab them and then throw them, use them as a projectile into their friend. You now that's like that's like Terminator One. Nice night for a walk, yeah. Nice night for a walk. <laughs> Fuck, that's such a good film, Terminator. I used to think Arnold Schwarzenegger was, um, was an idiot. And then one of my mates, he's like, oh, he, make, he makes stupid films, therefore, you know, he must be a bit of a simpleton. But uh, one of my mates showed me, um, oh, what's, what's it called? Jesus. One of my mates showed me Pumping Iron. And like, just watching it, like, it's a mockumentary, he, uh, if you... If you see him in interviews, he says like some of it was staged, but like most of it isn't. Most of it is like what genuinely happened. And he's he's like a Muhammad Ali character. Like Muhammad Ali used to, he used to fuck with his opponent, but he used to do it in in like a really funny way. So like it would be twice as like if you've ever had someone who's winding you up, but they're winding you up in a, like a clever way. It's way more annoying because it's like, if someone's just being a dick, well, you can just be like, well, fuck you. And you can start swearing at them. And you can be like, that guy's an asshole and you can walk away. But if they're saying really funny shit to you and they're kind of half being friendly, you, you, you don't, you don't have the right to be angry at them. 
Or if you do, you end up looking like the dickhead because it's like, you know, the guy, the other person can just walk away and be like, yeah, that guy's got no sense of humor. So, so like, uh, like Muhammad Ali. There's, there's some great footage, I watch it every so often, of him training in, uh, in Kinshasa for a foreman fight. <laughs> and he's, he's there and he's like, uh, sorry, he's there and he's, he's got a skipping rope and he's there, <laughs> talking to the camera. I mean, like, I'm finding it difficult to talk to, to a camera while I'm playing a computer game. This lad is skipping. He's skipping, in, like, intensely. And he's here talk, talking shit. And he's, like, bouncing off the ropes. Bouncing. Stick him. Jab him silly. Dance all night. You won't be so game in seven rounds. Time out in seven rounds. <laughs> and then... He's talking about how he wants to he wants to keep training, but they won't let him. And it's because George Foreman, they're they're both training at bollocks. They're both training in the same gym, and it's like George Foreman's time to get into the gym. So there's kind of a pass over, um, a changing of the guard section. How do, how do I, oh probably over here. And so Foreman is in, but he's not in the shot, and uh, at bollocks. And so you can see Ali, and he's look, he's looking up at uh, at what you'd assume is George Foreman or his trainer. And he's here, and he's like, you know, he starts doing all these impressions of George Foreman. It's like, you know, you know what we call George Foreman in my household? We call him the Mummy because he walks around like this. He starts going dun dun dun, and the whole crowd is laughing. I said, like, you can't. If someone's insulting you by calling you the Mummy because of the way you move around, like. You're a dickhead if you then turn around and be like, You're calling me a mummy? Fuck you, I'm gonna kill you and I'm gonna kill your whole family. Like, it's difficult to kind of get that, that, that crazy fight mentality that you see in, like, the UFC where they're all like, No, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. No, I'm gonna, like, you know, you're, you're dead, man. You're fucking dead. If someone's being like, You're the mummy! You move around, you're so stiff! It's not as a... Uh, he can't really do that, and so he's there, and he's fucking with him, and he's fucking with him, and he's like, um, he's like, um, George wouldn't fight me, I had to, I had to pretend to be done. They say he's fat, he's done, he's too old, he won't fight anymore. Well, look at me now, trim, slim, and on my toes. And then someone, like, shouts over at him, like, uh, yeah, but can you still dance? <laughs> and he looks at him and goes, can I dance? Is the Pope a Catholic? Everyone starts fucking laughing. Is you coloured? Everyone starts laughing again. Yeah, but can you still? I'll, I'll put the clip of this in a, in a in a link in the description. It's so good. I seriously watch it every so often just because just because I can, just because the internet exists. People would say that Muhammad Ali is the greatest of all time, though. They're, they're, they're just fucking stupid. He's an incredibly likable guy. He's more likable than Mike Tyson. During Mike Tyson's career, I mean, Mike Tyson is a, an incredibly likable guy now. I fucking love the man. He's so honest. And he's so different. See him on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he's talking about how, like, he's, he's, he's zen. He's, 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 you know, a peaceful guy. Has a like a, a a weed um what do you call it? Ugh. Has a weed um hotel. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. That's it. Jeez, that's it. Speak up, Sinead. Yeah, he's got a weed hotel. He's so different now, but um yeah, anyone who thinks that Mike Tyson wouldn't eat Muhammad Ali's fucking head is Bonkers. Mike Tyson, like, dead. Mike Tyson didn't lose any fights. Mike Tyson was mad into pussy and cocaine. And like, I think it was before Buster Douglas 
where like his his first big loss, I think like in his book, he doesn't he doesn't blame it on the thing, but he's like, yeah, so that happened in Japan, and I was like having threesomes with lots of Japanese birds, like oh Mikey Tyson, oh Sbrota, come onto my face, Micah. You honor me with your seed, oh I smash. Like he was just there plowing schoolgirls and you know doing coke to beat the band and then uh, Buster Douglas bait him and then the next day Mike was like yeah you know you know Chris Buster Douglas did a good did a terrific job and then so he sort of just went off the rails after that but I mean not through any fault of Mike Tyson not being able to box I just think his heart wasn't in anymore. But then again, I mean, we never saw the prime of Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali said, fuck off, I'm not going to Vietnam. Like, no Vietnamese never called me, you know, the word that white guys can't say. Um, which is a great point. And... US government punished him for that and they took three years off his off his boxing career. 27. That is prime. That is absolute prime. And you could also see it in the way that he fought. When he was 27 and he was um it was for uh, Sonny Liston, when he was boxing against Sonny Liston, he was so so fast. Apparently he used to run backwards around a track. And like you see him, like he's just he's just swinging his head around like a punch doesn't hit him. And then like if you look at the Foreman fight, he fights a completely different way. Like he's still agile and all, especially for a heavyweight. Like he's incredibly agile. But that was like he won on willpower with that one. He, he was just like taking punishment, and George Foreman just wasn't able to put the man away. And then at the end, it was just like oh yeah, bing bing bing. Then you go, tired George. I watched that footage from the rumble in the jungle, and something that doesn't get mentioned at, at all is a. Uh, so, like that fight was so hard for for Ali. Like it was not a, a, a breeze in the park. He had a he had a great strategy and he stuck to it and it paid off for him. But you know, incredibly difficult. Anyway, and he hits he hits George with like a little ping, and George starts losing the balance and he starts falling, and then um. And then as as Foreman's falling down, he's falling down and my or not my game. Um, Muhammad Ali is right there. Oh! That's it! That is it! Maybe another day! Maybe another day! Ah uh, what the what the fuck? Ah caught me sleeping. Hush, Robert Plant. I don't think you're on the list. Um right! That's it! That is it. Um, I might play a bit more of this, but I'm sure this footage has gone on for long enough. So yeah, that was the first. That was the first vag. If you're here at the end, well, thank you very much for hanging on. Oh, I started that story. If you've come this far, then you're obviously interested. Uh, so yeah, that uh, the the Muhammad Ali story. Look it up. Look it up. Rumble in the jungle. Uh, Round eight. So Foreman is going down and Ali, he's he's hit him. But like Ali clocks a punch. So his hand is, or sorry, not clocks a punch, clocks his arm. So he's up here ready to give like an absolute pounding of a punch. But Foreman is on the way down and Ali doesn't throw the punch. And like, I, that's, that says so much about the man that he was, confident enough that he had done enough that he didn't need to give George Foreman who was this threatening 
like monster of a boxer who was just killing other people, other incredible boxers. And Ali doesn't throw that last punch before Foreman goes down for the count. Ali is there, he stares at him, he tracks him. Actually, you know what? I'll just add a little bit of footage into this at the end. That's that's easier. Why am I explaining this when I could be showing it? Ali, Foreman throwing more punches now. Maybe this could be the tactic of Ali to let the man punch himself out. 30 seconds left in round eight. Very even fight. Ali, a sneaky right hand. Another sneaky right hand. This time he works over the shoulder of Foreman. It's the combination. Here comes the replay. The scenes in the ring are incredible. Jim, you're here it is. The greatest fight of his life. Watch it now. Watch it closely there. He'd been taking it easy, and then suddenly the moment came. Suddenly the moment came. Watch it. And that was no phantom. That was no phantom punch. That was no phantom punch. And he's down and out. Now, before we, um, before we finish things up, that's where that shit goes. And la 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 la! Hello, hello, old friend, old faithful friend. <clears throat> but now, what did I learn? What did I learn from the experience? I learned that a hanky panky is uh, is not as fun as that name suggests. It, it whoever came up with that name, it, pfft, like fuck them. Hanky panky. That sounds like it's gonna be such a fun cocktail. And then that fucking bland muck. Yeah! Terrible. Absolutely terrible. What else did I learn? Um, I didn't learn anything about Sinead O'Connor. Because I've seen her live. And, I mean, that one song, everything else. I mean, Mario was fun to play. I enjoyed getting back into my childhood playing Mario. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't grow much as a person tonight, did I? Ah, well. Like and subscribe. Don't, don't like and subscribe. Read a book or something. And now that the vag is completed, we get through this. Shut the fuck up! This was this was done differently. This was done yesterday. This was not done all in one shot because I forgot compare? to do it. Does anything compare? Nothing compares. Oh, are they gonna show her with a big bald head? Nothing compares.